Um, sorry about this. Uh, so this is Quabina from OpenMV. Everybody. <laughs> there you are. All right. This is you. I'll just put you over here. Okay. <laughs> Gonna enlarge that presentation and uh, okay There's presentation mode right here. All right. Okay, great. So hi everybody. I am uh, Kwaban Ajman. I am the president and co-founder of OpenMV. This is a small startup, um, and today I'll be talking to you all about how I took my company, OpenMV, from a hack a day fail of the week to a success. Okay, so first, what is OpenMV? Well, we're a company dedicated to making computer vision on microcontrollers easy. Our product is the OpenMV Cam. Basically, it's like an Arduino with uh, a camera built right in one board. And instead of C, though, you program it in Python. Um, so you can use the OpenMV Cam to take pictures and video and or run complex machine vision code that controls the process of taking pictures and video and you can control I.O. pins all at the same time, and it's in one package. Um, last but not least, it comes with a nice cross-platform IDE, so you really can't see it in this video here, but you have a frame buffer built in with a text editor, a serial terminal, and a um, histogram of the color channels all in one nice package. So anyway, nothing about marketing. Um, so how did OpenMV get started? Well, we're a Hackaday project, actually. Um, OpenMV was created by my vice president and co-founder, Ibrahim. Um, you can see in the picture there, it's a little bit washed out. Anyway, um, he started the project back in 2013 to build a better camera board. Pretty much at that time, he wanted to build something that has all the features we have today, something that was small and embedded and had the ability for you to control a camera and I.O. pins and, and make your program interact in the real world seamlessly. Um, so at first the project just started on a blog. He was just posting updates about something he was playing with, but all of a sudden he got tons of user feedback. People were very interested. Um, so soon he put the project up on Hackaday. And the community loved it on Hackaday, actually. Um, and so OpenMB was actually entered into the 2014 Hackaday Prize. Now, the project didn't win. We just got semifinalists. But there was a huge groundswell of support and a lot of interest from the community. So if you actually go to Hackaday and you click on Hackaday IO, you'll find us up there as a skull master. Um, we're one of the most viewed, commented on, followed, and sculled projects on Hackaday. So given all the momentum we had from people being interested in the project on Hackaday, we then went on to do a Kickstarter. So we were able to raise over $100,000 with uh, 900 backers to uh, make the project reality. Some of the backers are actually in this room. Um, considering how we didn't do any advertising beforehand, um, this was actually a pretty good result. And if you're wondering, I got involved in the project around this time to help make it a reality. So the, the Open and Bcam is basically an example of a project where you get the community interested, people like what you're doing, and they help you, they push you along to actually doing a Kickstarter and then making it a reality. Because Ibrahim blogged about it and let people know, it became a thing, versus if he had kind of worked on it in his basement and never released it until it was finished, it would have never actually been finished because he wouldn't have you know, had that feedback loop to push him forwards. So other examples of this, I was looking on Hackaday before I wrote this uh, presentation. There's another example called Mechaduino that recently did something similar to us. So they started, someone started a project on Hackaday basically to build a uh, closed loop stepper motor controller. And 
There was a lot of user feedback. People actually liked that idea. They wanted a simple board that you can just attach to the back of a stepper motor and suddenly you had closed loop feedback. And so by putting their project on Hackaday, the community embraced them. They got thousands of views, hundreds of comments, lots of followers, and likes. And because of that, they then went on to do a Kickstarter and raised over $60,000 to help make the project a reality. So basically, by embracing the community, the community embraces you. Just like the abyss. <laughs> OK, that's not a good joke. All right. <laughs> OK, but you know this story is about overcoming failure. And so like every story arc, there needs to be some rising action, some conflict, some failure. Pretty much in our story, we had a mountain of bad cameras. In particular, we designed the OpenMV cam with uh, a chip called the OV2640 image sensor from Omnivision. It was a nice chip. It has built-in JPEG compression, meaning that you more or less get fully JPEG compressed images on an 8-bit data bus right out from the camera. You can then take this image, store it in your microcontroller's RAM, and then write that out to an SD card easily. You don't need megabytes of memory to deal with the image. You could fit the JPEG compressed image in a few kilobytes. But, oh sorry, it was also cheap too, $2, which is really good. But uh, it was an old chip, a very old chip actually. It was produced back in 2006 to be precise. So we built a few boards by hand with it and there wasn't a problem. And we thought, okay, this is great. We've got this awesome chip, it's cheap, and we got these boards that we built by hand working. But, you know, there won't be any issues in mass production, right? <laughs> False. We had an 80% failure rate on our cameras. 80%. You know, thank God we tested the cameras before we sent them to our backers. How did this happen? Well, as it turns out, the balls on old BGA parts can microscopically rust and corrode, invisible to the naked eye. When reflowed, these rusted and corroded, and corroded solder balls don't actually melt into the paste on the solder ball onto the board like they should. Instead, as you can see in the slide, and yes, I know it has too much text in it. Luckily, you can't read it, though. Um, so, so you'll listen to me. Um, you have something called the head and pillow effect that happens. So when you use an old component, the, uh, the solder balls don't, don't combine. Like the solder ball, is, it's supposed to melt into the solder paste, but instead they just kind of sit on top of each other. And so the connection physically is there. The chip won't fall off, but electrically though, there's a layer of oxide in between the two and it doesn't work. And so if any pin on one of the 24 pins on the bottom of the camera has this problem, the system fails. So that was how we got an 80% failure rate. When we built our prototypes by hand, we didn't have this problem. Why? Because we basically could use as much heat as we wanted. We just kept applying the hot air gun until it worked. But, we went, but when we went into mass production, though, you've got a reflow oven, which you're flowing boards through, and you can only really put them through that once. So, you know, doing things by hand is very different from doing things with mass production. So this is how we made Hackaday's Fail of the Week. And I think, um, yeah. So. Be careful how you source parts, actually. Um, where did these bad cameras come from? Well, our contract manufacturer, Macrofab, uh, they got in contact with Omnivision about the OV2640 camera chip. Apparently, Omnivision never actually sold the OV2640 camera module freely on the market and had stopped production long ago. So how do we find this chip? Well, there's tons of stocks on AliExpress <laughs> from lots of different folks. Whatever spare chips, though, from Omnivision's perspective, that were out there were either reclaimed from old camera phones, literally chips that were desoldered off of a board after they were in use and then repackaged for poor saps like us to buy, or they were leftover stock that was never used. In either case, these chips were of poor quality, but you couldn't tell by just looking at them. They looked fine, and if you put enough heat on them, 
they tended to work. But that said, once you, once you go into mass production and you're just plopping these guys down on the board as quickly as possible, they aren't going to work for you. So be careful where you're sourcing parts. You might not get what you expect. If you aren't buying it on DigiKey or Mauser, you might run into some fun times. So how bad was the situation? At the beginning of this year, we were, the project was in a dark place. We had about 18K of cash on hand allocated to ship rewards with, 150 built up open MV cams with an 80% failure rate. They're not working and not really repairable. About 1,450 OV2640 camera modules and PCBs that we couldn't use, plus another 500 OV2640 camera modules that we uh, tried to order from another, you know, another person selling them online. But you know, that didn't really work since the, it's kind of the whole stock of them were bad, not just uh, the one person we were buying from. And worst of all, we had 900 disappointed backers who could uh, become angry and start sending us hate mail soon if we didn't do something. So these were dark days. So how did we survive? Flip the script over. Well, the community wanted the open MV cam, and I was determined to give it to them. Also, I didn't want to just be another failed project on Hack it, sorry, Kickstarter, like uh, Xano or uh, Peachy Printer. Well, I wasn't embezzling money, though, so. <laughs> anyway, so after looking at our finances, and what parts we had left on hand, I realized that we had enough funds to do one more manufacturing run with a new design. I figured that if we could build the product and have something working, our backers would help out and help us raise the money to ship the cameras to everybody. So we redesigned the OpenMV cam with another sensor from Omnivision called the OV7725. This sensor didn't have JPEG support, so we lost our ability to take higher resolution pictures and video, but it worked. Unfortunately, some of our backers left anyway, because they wanted that higher resolution capability. But nonetheless, the cameras worked. We initially built 10 prototypes just to make sure that you know, everything was working. And all 10 prototypes worked. We were back on track. So before going into mass production again, we wanted to make sure there were no problems with the design. So we ordered 40 OpenMV cams built with a new camera two panels. We wanted to verify that we could build 40 of them in mass production like we would build the rest of them and make sure there were no problems. Because we were very concerned that if this sensor had any failure, we'd have to rebuild the chip, rebuild the system with a new camera sensor and try again. Luckily enough though, the OV7725, we actually ordered them directly from the factory. And so all of them worked, all 40 boards. So we hit the pr button and went back into mass production. So note also during this whole time from February to May this year, we worked on the software for the OpenMV cam every night and weekend to build hype for our backers so they would help us raise the additional funds. We added all kinds of new features that we, did, we didn't originally have in the firmware and made it a lot better. We wanted to make sure that by the time we were shipping, our backers were super interested in helping us get the extra funds to actually ship to everybody. And so in the end, it was worth it. In five months, we managed to take a project that was failing and turn it around from being a failure to a success. And because we were transparent about the project and updated our status constantly every two weeks with paragraphs of text, not just one sentence about how things are bad, <laughs> not sure if you've been on any Kickstarter projects like that, um, because we worked hard and showed it, our backers helped us raise the additional funds, about another 15K, basically, to ship the cameras out to everybody. And so OpenMV Cam is an example of how you can turn a project around that's more or less going to fail unless someone puts some effort in into a success. So what did I learn? Well, first, you need to get the community involved in whatever project you're doing from day one. It's really not a good idea to work on something in isolation and then try to release the full product at the end of the day. I actually, uh, before I got involved in OpenMV Cam, I was working on a project called Omnia Creator 
for 1.5 years. The idea was to build a better IDE for uh, Arduino that had built-in data visualization. So you could just like make a function call and a graph would appear on your computer and then you can plot data to it. And the system worked really well, but no one cared. And so I had spent 1.5 years working on something that in the end of the day, no one was going to support or help build. It looks like I'm getting flagged down for time, so let me just finish up then. Um, so anyway, if you're also doing a Kickstarter, make sure you're passionate about the project, because like us, you may end up working night and weekends for no pay for about five months or longer to make sure it gets out there. Finally, also, verify your manufacturing process. Make sure things go smoothly. Don't try to rush and buy all your components immediately to try to get your product out there quicker, because what will end up happening is you'll have a lot of extra components left over. A lot of Kickstarter projects have failed because they've done this. They've, they've gone ahead and bought, bought all the parts they needed beforehand, and then there was some manufacturing snafu, and they have no money, and they need to build a system with a new PCB or change out some central component and they're out of luck. Also, update your Kickstarter constantly. Be transparent to your backers. Let people know what's going on. Anyway, that's all, folks. So there's me. I went, on a, well, I went to a tour to our manufacturer just to say hello, gave them cake. Uh, just wanted to be thankful for them helping us. And I actually want to give a shout out before I go to Macrofab. They were our contract manufacturer. and. Um, Without their help, we wouldn't have been able to succeed. They uh, put up with a lot of problems with our project when our camera sensor was bad, and they went over and beyond helping us to bug the problem and not kicking us to the curb because we were kind of losing them money at that point for our project being stuck in their pipeline. But without them, we, have never, we, have, we would have never made it. Anyway, that's it. Thank you. Thank you.